Welcome to the Crazy Town Podcast. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT Don. I'm like the explosive one. Let's crack into another one. TNT. Yo. Imagine. I'm imagining. That you were a villager. Okay. In Mexico. Oh, okay. Is that what they call them? It says villager. It says vill- Mexico still has villages? Uh, Yeah. Let me see. Farmers in the village of village. Texcalatian. You know, Texcalatlan. I'm bad at it, dude. That's a very, lot. It's very fine. It's a lot of words. It's like 14 letters, bro. Yeah, you should try to pronounce it a couple different more ways because it's it. You might get one of them right. Tex. Let's see. Tex. Call. <laughs> Whatever. This is enthralling. I, uh, I, yeah, listen, it's, listen, it's very weird to call people villagers because it almost. Like, is, is am that I racist? Wrong? <laughs> Doesn't it feel like it has some racial undertones? If it wasn't to Mexicans, it? would it be what it feels racist? I don't know. Is it's it because I'm calling Mexican people villagers? If you said Ukrainian villagers, I'd be like, that's weird, right? What about American villagers? We don't have that here. I mean, there's a village. Because, like, there's something, like, slightly condescending. I, w- I don't even want to say condescending. But when you think of villagers, you think of, like, just, like, lower brow. Like, you're not thinking of, like, the village doctor. Like, that don't sound like the... like. The- there's a shaman. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm not getting treated at the shaman. You take me to an L.A. doctor, some guy who drives a Lamborghini, that's who I want uh, doing surgery on me. You ain't taking me to your village doctor, your medical shaman, your medicine woman. I'm not going there. Okay, okay. All right, but I'm sorry. I just wanted to go on that quick little detour well, now about I feel like villagers. A racist, so I'm gonna stop. No, we should call them villagers if that's what the article they are, designated. They call them, them farmers of the village. Farmers is okay. Farmers of the village. That's weird energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Go ahead. Finish. What's um, the story? So though? you're a farmer in sure. a village. Absolutely. Um, and the cartel is coming around, right? Yeah, they usually do that. And they're like, "Hey, man, give me all your crops." And like this know. happens a few times. I wouldn't. I wouldn't give them to him. What would What would you do if you got fed up, man? What would you do if you got fed up? So you mean we're being exploited? Yes. All right. Um. The the, the uh the exploitative group is coming in and taking a portion of my profits. I mean, or your crops or whatever. Yeah, or, I mean, well, you know, raping your women in the village or something. It's, all, it's always profits, man. If they're taking my crops, they're taking my profits. And you're saying, what would I do to the cartel? I mean, essentially, I would think you would fight back, but it's probably a death sentence, you know? But I can see it getting to a point. Yeah. So the far, the, the farmers of the village decided to fight back and chase him into the woods. The farmers of the village. And they murdered 10 cartel members. Okay. And then what happened after that? That's the next question I was going to ask you. What What do you mean? It's pretty obvious. What do you think the cartel would do after that? They went in and killed the entire village. (laughs) Jesus. That's what I would do if I was a cartel. Wow, you're a ruthless cartel member. Tell well, me mean, more about I'm, your murders and genocide. I'm not a cartel, thank God, or there'd be a bunch of dead villagers. Yeah, yeah. So what they did is they went back and yeah. they kidnapped 14 people, okay. ranging in age. They took like four kids, ranging in age from one years old to 14 years old. Whoa. They took some people. They took like some women. cops they from a cops. checkpoint. All right. They didn't take any women. And that's probably the first wave. Yeah. Yeah, they're gonna like. I bet, it, and that, this just happened. They just went back and stole them. So, like, I'm guessing yeah. they're gonna like murder them and bring them back and dump them in the village. That's probably what they're gonna do. Because in the cartel, they always like dump dead bodies everywhere. That's like what they do in Mexico. Yeah, they're known for that. I would imagine that they would kill some as kind of like a. Uh, I mean, Jesus, or just bring like some body parts back or something. It's like, like a pretty morbid thing to talk about when you know it's like actually happening to people. But you know, yeah. fine, we can get these jokes off. I'm I would. Not, think- I mean, I'm not joking about it. It's a very serious topic. I'm not talking about like, <laughs> ha ha, look at the arm yeah i know but it's i don't know it's a little weird weird energy speaking so matter-of-factly about but i do think that they'll probably kill some of the individuals and then probably you know hold the rest hostage and be like hey look if you f up again you'll never see oh they're gonna they're gonna like play like yeah they're gonna play good they're gonna play nice and say listen we'll save the rest and if you if you just disrespect us again 
Yeah, I mean it's racketeering, man. It's uh, it's protection money. It's it's there's been so many different names like crimes change names over time. Like uh, what do you call it? Human trafficking. That's just pimping, you know. And it should be illegal. Well, I mean it's a little <laughs> different if like they yeah. you steal them or they quote unquote are volunteering to be there. That's funny because human trafficking is just moving any woman across state lines for sex for money. Yeah, but it, but if she's riding in the front seat and thinks she wants to be there, that's different than having her in the the trunk yeah uh-huh sure <laughs> I'm gonna tell that to the court guy my guy you you, you plead your case to the court I'm but that's not what trying they're getting to people. make a point for anything oh, yeah uh-huh. you sound like you're trying to defend r kelly um <laughs> wow so, jesus so it's very funny when you say like uh like racketeering is, i didn't is, say that you said it. i did but it is it's racketeering it's essentially like going into these businesses or going up to a business owner or a person or an entrepreneur and being like look i'm gonna take some of your money and you're going to give it to me, and, and if you don't, I'm going to, you know, something bad might happen well, to your business. Well, first what they say is we're going to give you some protection. And you're like, I don't need any protection. And they're like, bad things can happen at any time. Yeah. And yeah. then they become the bringer of bad things. I feel like Mexican cartel would be a lot more like just, hey, look, we're taking this money. We're taking these crops. And people be like, no, you're not. Be like, I have a big gun. They do have big guns. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like. So what do you what do you do in that situation? I don't know if I would even try to attack them in the first place, like because you knew they were going to come back and do bad things. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I can definitely see you being fed up, especially if this has been happening for years. And you know, I applaud those people for trying to take matters into their own hands. Yeah, they're like, I watched you steal from my daddy. You ain't gonna steal from me. Yeah, they felt like they had no choice, man. And it's it's very. Like, to think, Jonas, like, if somebody called on me to be like, hey, you know, you got to abandon your life and you have to uh, pick up this M16 and go kill people, bro, that would be a culture shock. I don't know if I could handle it. I don't think I could. Do you Do you really, you don't think you could just, like, go out and start shooting people? Like, to defend your country or your family or something? I didn't join the military for a reason. And it's not that I <laughs> don't like it. I mean, I appreciate we have one and they do things, but I can't go out there, like, <laughs> get shot at and stuff. Like, ain't no guns coming for me. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, I mean, what if somebody came in and said they were going to take, I don't know, 25% of your paycheck from now on? And they were like, uh, I'm just going to do that and there's nothing you can do. How would you feel about that? I'd be mad. You'd be mad. I would you be mad enough to hit that person? Hit them? <laughs> I'm just saying, it's like we gotta, we have to put things in perspective so that we can see. Like, this is literally somebody coming in here and being like, "Yo, Jonas, I'm gonna start taking, um, I don't know, twenty five percent of your check, half of your check every month, and, and then like, walking out." And I'm like, "No, you're not." And they're like, "Yeah, I am." And they like, just walk out. They're like, you need protection. Bad things happen sometimes. If you know what I'm saying. And then you call the cops up, and the cops are like, "Yeah, we'll be there." That's like sounds like some Rico. That's exactly what Rico racketeering. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it is Rico. So that's it's what like the cops would say the Rico though. So for the people at home, it's like you got to think about the situation like this. These guys just walk in and they're like, "Hey, I'm gonna take half your paycheck. Do something." And you're like, "No." And then like, what do you do? You hit them. They kill you. No, they kill someone that you care about. Because they because they could have came in and killed the people that killed their friends, but instead they took the people that meant something to them and yeah. took them away. I mean, well, they need those other people to do the work, right? You gotta keep, you gotta keep farming. I need you to keep getting I mean, your check. So they come in and they threaten my life. They threaten like threaten your life and take someone you care about's life with them. Yeah, that's that's the real pain. That's crazy. And when you put it into like your own life like that, you really do see the point that these people get to where they feel like they have to do something to defend Well, because if they were like, hey, I'm going to take your check, and I'm like, nah, and then they drive to my mom's house and kidnap her. Yeah. Yeah. Because I said, no, Bro. you can't have my check. And look, man, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm pro, not the one. Not pro-death? I'm not, no, I'm not the one. I'm not freaking, uh, what's his name? Chev Chelios, I'm not the guy from, uh, what's the, Brian, Brian, you're swinging your arms around in circles. I am, dude, I'm making hand motions, man, the Bourne identity, oh, I'm you're not, not Jason Bourne. You're not Matt Damon? Yeah, I'm not Matt, I said Brian, but I was thinking Bourne, Matt. And you Damon. said Chev Chelios, which yeah. is not that either. I mean, he, you know, he'd probably kick some ass too. Yeah, you're not the transporter. No, I'm not the transporter. You're not the beekeeper, his new movie. <laughs> but I'm just, 
I'm not the one. I'm not gonna go out here and go and like shoot some people and Denzel get my mom the equalizer. back. Equalizer. Yeah, I'm not getting gonna my, go get my. I'm getting my mom back. I'm not gonna do that. So it's just, it's done. It's over with. I guess you're just gonna be taking my checks. You know what you do to get out of it? You fucking move. That's the easiest way. But they still have your mom. I mean, she probably did anyway. Right? Wow. What On can that I note, do? that's all the time we have for today's episode. What Please can make I sure do? you like and subscribe for Jonas. TNT, I uh, we out.